So I've made a few different videos about Logic on iPad and why I like it and a bit about how I use it. But over the last few weeks and really a few days last week, I created a beat from scratch and kind of built up this whole beat, kind of inspired by like a yeet or rage type genre thing, just seeing if I can make something in a similar vein. And if you've watched my channel before, you'll know that I like to build out my songs in clips or scene view, live loops as Apple calls it, on Logic. I like to be able to see all of my instruments and then I like to have different clips essentially that I program by playing MIDI in, usually with an external keyboard, that build out these different components of the song. But often when I make my videos about making beats from scratch, I end it here. And this is not the final version of most of the music I make. If I make a song and I finish it, it ends up in an arranger mode and it looks a lot more like this. So I wanna talk about the beat I made, how I made it, and how you go from live loops, these little scenes, these little squares, or as one of my friends once put it, an Excel sheet, <laughs> to an actually arranged beat that you can then export the stems of and add automation to, which is one of the big reasons why I like having an arranger view on my devices. In the world of DAWless gear, something like the Machine Plus has a pretty good version of this. The Akai Force has a version of this that I actually haven't used a ton. The MPCs don't really have an arranger like this. You can essentially say, I want this scene to play, this scene to play, this scene to play, and create kind of a list, a sequence of sequences, but you can't then look at what you've sequenced as an arranger and automate it. So you end up doing some of your automation and arranging in your DAW with the MPCs. And then with the Ableton Push, if you're using it in standalone, while you can technically record from clips to an arranger, you can't ever actually see what you recorded into the arranger on the Push itself. And so I highlight that not to disparage any of that gear, but just to say it's actually pretty cool and impressive how much you can do on this. And while I was working on this beat, what I realized is that if I didn't have a bunch of plugins I rely on and that I like to use on my PC, I could definitely make a whole song from start to finish, export it, mix it, master it. That is all technically feasible here. And with plugins like the built-in ones in Logic or the Fab Filter bundle, you have access to some pretty pro level stuff to make complete tracks in here, which I thought was pretty cool. If this feels like whiplash from last week's video where I was talking about the cons of Logic, I wanna be clear, like I said in that video, I think Logic Pro on iPad is an amazing app. There is absolutely room for improvement, and if you wanna hear me talk about that, I recommend watching last week's video about what's wrong with Logic on iPad. But this is kind of, not necessarily the opposite, but it's one of the things I think is really cool about Logic on iPad. So this is essentially a completed beat and breaking down kind of what I did here, when I'm building up a beat on an iPad or really any loop based, like clip based, scene based workflow, the most complete and complicated column in this case, sometimes they go the other direction, but in live loops, it's a column here. This is a scene, scene nine. This is basically what I built. So the, when I'm building out the beat, because there's not like a real differentiation between the chorus and the verse for this type of beat, I build the most complex version, which is often what I do in my videos, right? I'll just layer and layer and layer. And then what I do is I duplicate that a bunch of times and create scenes and clips with less of the complexity. I essentially reverse engineer the build up and build down, uh, you know, the the dynamic range of the complexity and the volume into a beat by duplicating and deleting components, sometimes adding new ones, but especially for a simpler beat like this, it really was create all of this, which I'll play for you. Oh, I need to be in trigger mode. So it was create all of this and then duplicate it and then build it back into a full beat. So this is what the final column sounds like. And it sounds like chaos if you just start here. Well, if we go to the second scene, after I built out the entire song, it sounds a lot like the first real chunks I even made for this track. So what's going on here? In this case, we're playing with 
the BA1 from Baby Audio. Um, not sponsored, I, I paid for this plugin. I'm pretty sure I paid for every plugin I used on this track. And this is the Moving Organ Pad Gamella. It's so cool. This is the original piece of idea that became this whole beat. And then I sort of started reverse engineering it. Like I said, I built this entire column to get to this point. So we start layering things, right? Let's trigger this whole column. Now the bass is in there. And the drums are a kit called Secret Sauce, which is a Logic kit. We do have some other instruments though. So if we go here, we have Marseille, which is a chord gadget, which kind of goes back to one of the videos I made recently. Chord gadget is now audio unit V3, so you can use them in Logic like this. I have Destroyed, which is an alchemy synth. I have another chord gadget called Abu Dhabi with the add-on beat kit preset, so I can just add a little bit of additional drum elements. I have a sample that I dropped into the quick sampler, and I believe this is, and this would probably just be a slight uh, splice sample. I'm pretty sure all the samples I used were uh, Mr. Hudson samples. And this has EQ on it, Overdrive, and Cosmonaut from Brambos, kind of giving it additional layers of complexity. If we turn off Cosmonaut, for example, and we hit play. Turn off Overdrive. Turn off EQ. This is what it originally sounded like. And now all the effects are back. And let's see if I added a bunch of effects to anything else. There's Lo-Fi Dirt on BA1. Low, or sorry, Low Fly Dirt, which is an MSX2 plugin, I believe. And it's something that Sarah the Instrumentalist, or Sarah Too Ill, she recommended a long time ago that I found to be a really good plugin for drums as well. So I put that on this drum kit I made. Hmm. I guess I didn't put on this drum kit, but on the Secret Sauce drum kit, the Logic kit that I used, I did use Low Fly Dirt. I then built a second drum kit to go along with the first drum kit. And so together they sound like this. And it's just four samples of Mr. Hudson samples. I do like that pack. And those are on top of the, this track here, the Secret Sauce Logic Drum Kit. We also use the Bleece Alpha for a pad that I thought sounded pretty cool. Let's play that. And that has Perforator as well, which is a Brambo's plugin. I use Cosmonaut and Perforator a lot, and I'm pretty sure Kurt Lawrence, a regular viewer of the channel, is who recommended both of those, and they're both really awesome. So thank you, Kurt, if that was you, and sorry if that wasn't you. And then we also have Helsinki with Super VHS on it. Yeah, so I paid for every plugin in this video. And all of these together helped create some of the vibes. So we do have this kind of slower part here this kind of build up part where someone could just like say a few words who had one chance like, and then it would go back into the beat and so once this was all created I then essentially triggered by making sure I had this button here this, this uh, R with the arranger view in it highlighted when you record these cells they're now recording into the arranger and so that's what i was able to do i essentially recorded the entire thing into the arranger built up the beat and i could have stopped there but i didn't once i recorded into here and let me make sure i can actually play it. i think i hit that button in the upper left okay good this button right here boom um, then I had this entire thing, and something you might notice is that I've cloned the top instrument a few times, and that's because I started building an automation. So I would add an auto filter, and I would add different reverbs and beat breaker, so I'd chrome a verb on different versions of this because it was starting to get really repetitive, that dun -na -na, dun -na -na, dun -na -na. And so I started messing with it, 
and using automation to change different elements. And so right now the automation is set to read, but basically if you hit this icon, you can see the automation. And this is where I'm automating. And it'll actually tell you what you're automating, which is really cool. So like chroma verb, wet amount, you can see in the first version, I'm essentially changing the chroma verb wet amount. And I'm using a band pass filter on this track, which is, yep, you can see, oh, that's so cool. It'll show you used, right? So auto filter cut off and chroma verb wet, and you can see what you're drawing. So I'm drawing this automation in for the chroma verb and the filters. And then sometimes I'm playing the filter. So over here, I actually do play the auto filter cut off in this section. And so I basically cloned the BA1 and its associated effects three times. So there's four of them total. This isn't necessarily the best way to do this. There's other ways to do this, but this will let me have different types of presets and different types of filters and not really worry about turning them off or on. If there's better ways to do that all in one track, by all means do those or <laughs> let me know if you know, but cloning the track work and I have a lot of performance headroom with this iPad, so it was not a problem. But that's the most automation I did once I already had everything else. So I'll close the automation view and go back to the normal view. And then, yeah, I built out this whole track here just by playing it, like I said. So you record playing the live loops, which I've shown before, but you live, you record enable this arranger and then you just play your beat and you end up with this listenable, this like essentially linear recording of your performance. And then you can tweak it at automation, like I said, and get closer to a finalized song. If I wanted to, I could then record vocals into this and then add different EQs and mixing plugins per track if I wanted to, add some of the fab filter stuff that I have, or just use Logic's effects. And they also have a mastering assistant. I forget what they call it. It's, yeah, it just says mastering. I don't know how to use it, so I'm gonna remove it. But they built this into, oh gosh, please stop. Okay, I hit a button I shouldn't have hit. I don't want this here. Okay, good. Um, I would recommend watching other videos on how to use the mastering uh, assistant thing on the master output, because it seems useful. They added it to this version of Logic and the desktop version, but I have not messed with it enough and I'm also not very good at mastering. I mastered my own album, There's Something Better, which I'm very proud of. I'd be stoked if you checked it out, Spotify, Apple Music, Bandcamp, wherever. But one of the complaints I get is that it's too quiet and that's super true. Um, so I'll probably actually pay someone like a professional to master my next album, but I could also potentially use an auto tool like this, but I, yeah, if you know what you're doing, this is probably very cool and helpful. Or maybe even if you don't, it may be just super automatic. I'm not an expert on that component. But anyway, let's take a listen to the entire beat. Before I play the beat, I do just wanna give a huge thank you to everyone who has liked my videos, subscribed to the channel, who's commented and shared their thoughts and feelings and their opinions and their experiences on these videos. It really makes this feel like a community and is a, probably the most rewarding part of this whole YouTube channel project thing I'm doing. So thank you again so much to everyone who's done that. And I hope you enjoy this Yeet type beat. And if anyone knows Yeet, see if he likes this beat. All right, here we go.
Thanks again for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I may end up turning this into a real beat or like into a real song, I guess, um, with myself on it. Although it probably won't end up like a yeet song if I do that, but that's fine too. Sometimes just making something inspired by someone who's got an interesting sound and bringing your own flavor to that can make a totally new thing too. So anyway, thank you again for watching. Hope you enjoyed and I'll catch you soon. Peace.